Hi, my name is Oyun Shet, and I am an information security analyst at ISOH Data Securities Private Limited. Um, today, we will be covering ARP, concept of ARP, subnetting, and as well as carry routing. Okay, so on in the previous day, uh, so why we will uh, need this session, right? We need this session because we have covered numerous concepts in this video. We have covered the tricky topics like ARP and subnetting. Okay. That is why uh, I have decided to accumulate all those topics together and uh, make a video on it. Okay. So uh, let's start with ARP. In the previous day, in the networking fundamentals video, I uh, covered that how data travels uh, in a LAN, in a local area network, right? I have uh, shown it in the packet tracer. So today we will understand the, that data transfer in depth, okay? We will learn how the ARP works, okay? We will see how the data actually travels in the network, okay? And we will also see it in the packet tracer. Okay, so let's share my screen. I will uh, show you guys uh, how the ARP, I mean, ARP request travels from one node to another node, right? From one computer to another computer. Okay, so let's go. Okay. We will open draw.io. I prefer it because it gives a good visual representation of a network diagram. Let's save it. Okay. Now let's take two switches here. And let's take an another switch. We'll copy it and place it here. Let's take four computers, which will be our nodes. Let's place these computers, two computers here and two computers in the switch. Let's label all those switches and computers, okay? So let's say this is PC1. Okay. Let me copy it and paste it. Okay. Let's change the levels. For instance, this is the PC1 for switch. Two. This is PC two. This is also PC two. This is switch one, and this is switch two. Let's connect all these devices with a wire. We are connecting it, right? Okay, now we are done. So we have drawn a diagram, right? It's a network diagram. So here, two switches are connected with each other. That is switch one and switch two. And two PCs are connected with each of the switches, PC one and PC two. So in the previous day, we saw that 
if the PC one wants to send a data, it will travel through switch one, it will reach to switch two. And if the PC one wants to send the data uh, to the PC one of switch two, then the data will travel from PC one, which is connected with switch one, through switch one to switch two, and from the switch two to PC one of the switch two, right? So data will travel like this. But is it the procedure? Is it the whole procedure? No. If we want to know the procedure in depth, then we have to learn the concept of R, okay? Address Resolution Protocol. So what is R? R stands for, as I have already said, it's an Address Resolution Protocol. What it does actually, it helps to map the MAC addresses with known IP addresses, okay? So let me explain this topic. First, when PC1 wants to send the data to PC1 of switch 2. Okay, let me change the names of the PCs. It will be better. For instance, if PC1 wants to send the data to PC3, okay? So first, what will happen? First, PC1 has a IP address, okay? PC1 has a IP address, right? So let me write the IP address beside this level. For instance, the IP address is 192.168.0.1. Okay, I'm just taking it as an example. This is not the real IP address of PC3. Okay, and for example, it's 192.168.0.3. PC1 knows the IP address of PC3, right? which is 192.168.0.3, but PC1 doesn't know the MAC address of PC3. So why do we need MAC address? We need the MAC address to transfer the data because our data transfers through, through data link layer, okay? So that is why, why data link here? Why MAC address? Because MAC address uniquely represents our computer, okay? MAC address uniquely represents our computer. That means our network interface card because our network adapter because the net, uh, MAC address is burned on the network inter interface card or NIC, right? So what will happen? PC1 knows the data, uh, PC1 knows the IP address of PC3, but it doesn't know the MAC address of PC3. Okay? PC1 doesn't know the MAC address of PC3. Even the switches are the even the switches are also ignorant of the MAC addresses. Okay, even the switches are also ignorant of the MAC addresses of PC1 and PC2. Switch one doesn't know with which interface PC1 is connected to and with which interfaces PC2 is connected to in the at the very beginning. Okay. Same goes for switch two. Switch two also doesn't know. Well, with which interface PC3 is connected to and with which interface PC4 is connected to, okay? That is why PC1, switch one wants to learn the MAC address of PC1. Otherwise, it will be unable to deliver the data to PC switch two and to PC3, right? So it has the process. It has some process to learn the MAC address of PC1. So what will happen? So first, PC1 will send an ARP request, okay? PC1 first will send an ARP request. So how ARP request looks like? For instance, let me open the notepad. Okay, so here, for instance, uh, PC1 has the IP address. So the ARP request, we are first writing the ARP request, right? ARP request, the source IP is, source IP will be written there. Source IP is 192.168.0.1. Destination IP, PC1 knows the destination IP, right? With the IP of PC3, because it wants to send the data to PC3. So this is the destination IP. Then source MAC. So what is the source MAC of PC1? Uh, let's, for example, let's take an arbitrary example. Okay. If uh, 
one, two, three D, six F, okay, or four F, and ninety. For instance, this is a this is an arbitrary MAC address, okay? This is not a real MAC address, and the destination MAC address will be like this. If 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 why this is the broadcast MAC address why the PC one is sending the broadcast address because PC one doesn't know the MAC address of PC three so it wants that it gets the so so it it wants that it gets the reply from PC three right so what will happen. PC one will broadcast the data. Will broadcast the I mean ARP request. Okay. After broadcasting the ARP request, it will be flooded to PC two and also switch one. Okay. So now switch one has learned the MAC address of PC one. It will learn that, for instance, let let's name the interfaces. Let's name it as f01 why f01 f01 okay so that stands for fast ethernet okay and this is also f01 this is f02 this is also f02 and this is F zero three, and this is also F zero three. Okay, so now, for instance, the uh, PS switch one has learned. So switch one has learned the MAC address of PC one. It it uh, I mean. Uh, gets acquainted that it's it's get acquainted with that that PC one is connected with the F zero one interface of switch one. Okay, so PC one is connected to the F zero one interface of the switch one. So switch one has a MAC address table. So it will update its MAC address table. The MAC address table will look like. In the MAC address table, it will be written like F A zero one, and the so MAC address of PC one. So it will learn that with my F A zero one interface, PC one is connected to. Okay. So now after getting the frame, after getting the uh, I'm sorry, after getting the ART request, what will happen? Switch one will also broadcast it. Okay, switch one also broadcasted because switch one doesn't know that with if is if is zero three interface switch two is connected, it doesn't know, so it will broadcast the packet again. Okay, so after broadcasting it, the switch two will receive that. Okay, switch two will receive that. So switch two, what will uh, what will switch two will do? Switch two will also update its MAC address table. Okay, switch two also update its MAC address table. Okay. After that, what will happen? After that, switch to again broadcast that I R request. Okay. Switch to again broadcasts that R request. It will be received by both PC three and PC four. Now, the IP address of PC three is matched, right? Because the destination IP address is one ninety two point one sixty point zero point three, right? So the R so the destination IP uh, destination IP address gets matched, right? That is why from PC three an R reply will be generated. The whole R request was the broadcast message, but when the R reply will be received by switch two, it will be directly. I mean, it will it will go from PC three to switch two directly. Switch two will not broadcast it again because switch. Three no switch two knows that with F A zero three interface switch one is connected, so it will be received by switch one and switch one knows that P C one is connected with the F A zero one interface. Okay, so it will directly send that reply to P C one. 
So in the R reply, what will be written? In the R reply, the source IP will be written. The source IP will be the IP address of PC3. Destination IP will be the IP address of PC1. Source MAC will be the MAC address of PC3. For instance, let's say um, B, I'm just taking an arbitrary example, C8, 18, and then E5, F2, and HD. Okay. This, this is an arbitrary example. Okay. And in the destination MAC address, in the destination MAC, what will be written? The MAC address of PC1. The MAC address of PC1. It will be written inside the destination MAC address. Okay. This is the whole process of ARP request and ARP reply. After that, what will happen? PC1, when PC1 wants to send the data, it will not be broadcasted, the actual data. It will not be broadcasted. Okay. It will be it will be a unicast run. Okay. It will be it will travel from PC1 to switch one and from switch one to switch two and from switch two to PC3. Okay. And after that, the reply can go uh, from PC3 to switch 2, from switch 2 to switch 1, and from switch 1 to PC1. This is the whole process of ARP or address resolution protocol. Okay. There are various types of ARPs present, okay, like proxy ARP, okay, then uh, gratuitous ARP. Mainly we will use, uh, we use actually uh, gratuitous ARP. It, it is an important concept. It is, it is an important concept. We will discuss that later in the later videos. If we go in depth uh, about the uh, ARP, okay. If we if we want in depth knowledge in uh, about ARP, then we will go for that. It will it will be covered in the later topics in the in, in later days because that is a whole uh, another topic. Okay. Okay. Now we have covered. Uh, it is also written that ARP caches keep a list of IP addresses with its matching MAC addresses. So, IP it ARP cache an ARP cache is stored. Okay, an ARP cache is stored where it is written the IP address. I mean, the MAC addresses is related to the IP addresses where the total data of IP addresses and MAC addresses are kept. Okay, it will be kept. It 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 it, it, it is kept. And in the, in the ARP cache, show so when PC1 wants to send the data to switch one, first the ARP cache will be checked whether the data is present or not. Okay, whether the IP address is mapped with the MAC address or not. If it is not mapped with the MAC address, then the process of ARP request happens. Otherwise, the data will travel from in a, in a normal flow from PC1 to switch one, from switch one to uh, switch two and from switch to do either to pc4 either to pc3 where it is intended to okay so this is the whole concept of art okay now we will come to the concept of subnetting okay in a in a while we will also see that in the packet tracer okay well, first uh, let's see it in the packet tracer then we will discuss the concept of subnetting okay let's have a look how the data travels and what is happening behind the scenes? Let me open the packet tracer. Yeah, it's open. And let's uh, let's take a switch first. Let's take two switches. Okay. Let's take four PCs. Okay. And let's connect this network devices with WARES. Okay. 
okay so we have connected these devices with Verex. okay each of the pc has already a mac address as you can see if you hover on it then you will see the mac address of the fast ethernet zero i mean the nic card okay that is triple zero five dot five double ea dot one two zero zero this is another representation of mac address you can write the mac addresses like this way or you can i mean writing this particular way okay i have already uh, discussed about this i mean representations in the last video okay so now let's connect these two switches with a crossover cable because when we are connecting two same devices we use crossover cable right and when we are connecting different devices different network devices we use straight through cable right okay so we have connected it with the crossover cable okay now let's assign the ip addresses in each of the pcs let's write 192.168.0.1 for pc1 default gateway we do not require any default gateway because we have not used any router right we will not provide it okay so we do not need to provide the default gateway okay all right Okay, and let's also give 192.168.0.4 for the PC4 and this one, 255, the 255, the 255, okay. So now what will happen, let's, let's uh, open the simulation mode, okay. Let's open it in the simulation mode and try to ping this this uh, try to send a ping request from pc0 to pc2 okay let's open the command prompt let's write ping one ping 192.168.0.3 okay let's run it the simulation mode and press enter so now see what is happening here pc1 has broadcasted the packet right the switch one has also broadcasted it it will it has received by switch two switch two has also broadcasted the packets so pc2 the as the, the ip address is intended is matched with pc2 the pc2 is sending the reply the reply is unicast as it is traveling from switch one to switch zero and from switch zero to pc0 okay that is an unicast frame so that is that was the process of R, right? After that, the actual data is being sent from PC zero to switch zero, switch zero to switch one, and from switch one to PC two. After that, this is the type ICMP as you can see, right? This is the ICMP echo request, and after that, the ICMP echo reply is being received by PC zero. the data will travel from switch zero to pc zero okay as soon as the icmp eco reply is received by pc zero we have received the reply we have received a ping reply from 192.168.0.3 by its 32 time 12 seconds and ttl value is 128 okay so this is the whole procedure when the icmp request is being sent you will not get the reply you will it, 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 it this reply will not be visible here when you are getting the reply from your intended pc from the from your intended destination then you will can then you can see the i mean reply here okay look the reply is received okay so this is the this is how art works this is how data travels through i mean switches okay even this the concept of this arc will also be uh, i mean is also applicable through routers when we are i mean 
delivering the data from one network to another network when we are delivering the data from one network to another network we have to send it through routers right so when we are sending the data through routers router also need to know the mac address of the another the, um, of, the, of the interface of another router okay so the concept of arp is also also applicable there okay okay so now we will move to the next topic we will move to the next topic subnetting okay so what is subnetting this is a complex topic and this is a tricky topic okay this is a complex and tricky topic so what is subnetting subnetting means when we are dividing a network into smaller networks into multiple smaller networks that is called subnet that means a network under a network okay why do we need subnetting first of all first of all we need subnetting where it is i mean we need to we need to reduce we need to reduce the unnecessary uses of routers okay we need to reduce the unnecessary usage of the routers besides that let me draw it. let me open a new page if we take two routers here okay if we take two routers here and we will connect it with a wire okay so when we are connecting two routers with a wire and if we assign an this is a network right this is a network because the this is this is one interface of the router of this first router and this is another inter this is one interface of the second router right we can name this interfaces we can name this interfaces for instance the name of this interface is fa or for instance okay this is fa01 okay and of router 1 let's copy it okay this is r1 and this is r2 okay so when r1 and r2 is connected to each other so that is called the point to point connection right so in the point to point connection what happens if we assign a network if we assign an ip if we assign for instance let's take the if we assign a network of slash 24 class c network this is 00 not 01 slash 24 so how many ip addresses do we need here we need only two ip addresses for fs01 interface of r1 and for fs01 interface of r2 but what we are getting here we are getting almost 256 or not almost we are getting 256 uh, ip addresses so we need only two ip addresses but we are getting 256 ip addresses that means 254 ip addresses are i mean wasted okay and among among the uh, that 254 uh, i mean 256 ip addresses among 256 ip addresses you know, what happens actually one is reserved for the network address another is for reserved for the broadcast address okay if we if we leave those two ip addresses then also 252 ip addresses are being wasted so to reduce the wastage we have considered we have we have uh, i mean introduced the, the concept of CIDR classless interdomain routing. So, with the concept of subnetting, we are also, I mean, able to, I mean, uh, we'll sub, uh, we are also able to divide the network and as well as to reduce the uh, usage of IP addresses, IPv4 addresses, because the, the number of IPv4 addresses are very less, right? according to the demand it, it, it is very it is very less 
according to the demand. That is why we need to reduce the wastage of the IP addresses, IPv4 addresses, right? So the concept of CIDR is also coming here. Okay, classes intertermin routing. Okay, we will discuss it in a bit. Okay. So what we are doing here, we will divide it into the in, in, into sub networks. It will also, I mean, um, reduce the, I mean, extra burden on routers. Okay, as we can see here, it reduces unnecessary usage of routers and it helps the data to travel a shorter distance. Okay, that means we can, I mean, um, divide the network. We can divide that a particular network into multiple sub networks here. If if one interface is connected to a switch. And with that particular switch, let's say 50 computers are connected, okay? Or the, well, let's say 20 computers are connected, okay? Let's say 20 computers are connected with that particular switch, okay? And so what will happen? We can divide that particular switch. We can we, we, we can divide that particular, I mean, uh, computers in different networks, in different networks without assigning them I mean, a to whole network without assigning them a whole network. We can divide a single network into multiple sub networks. Okay. So, what happens? Uh, Subnetting, um, I mean, so what is happening behind this? One? It, is, it is happening. I mean, what it is, it is being used to divide, it is being used to devise the domains of broadcasted networks right as it is written there and as i have told you that we can i mean convert the i mean a, a, a large network into multiple smaller sub networks okay so now after that the idea comes of FLSM, fixed length subnet mask okay so fixed length subnet mask what is what does it mean and what does it do okay so what happens it it i mean divides the networks of same sizes i mean it, it, when we are dividing a large network into multiple sub networks all the sub, sub networks all the sub network all the prefix lengths of those sub networks will be the same okay that is a lesson so we will understand with a particular example we'll understand it with a particular example so let's say uh, let me take another page. So let's say this is a router. There's a router and with that particular router, four switches are connected. Four switches are connected. Okay. Four switches are connected. So with those four switches, what happens? For instance, we need 45 computers with uh, the needs to be connected with one particular switch. It actually uh, doesn't happen in reality, but uh, for the sake of simplicity, let's take this example, okay? Let's take uh, 45 computers are connected with this particular switch, okay? In each, with each of the switch. With each of the switch, we require 45 computers, okay? And each of the computers need to be in a different network, okay? And we have been assigned with a network address of, for instance, one ninety two point one sixty eight point zero point zero slash twenty four. We have been assigned with this particular network address. So. How many IP addresses we are getting here? We are getting 256 IP addresses, right? Let's open the notepad at the side. So how many IP addresses we are getting? We are getting 256 IP addresses. So among these 256 IP addresses, two IP addresses are reserved. One is for the network address, okay? One is for the network address. And another is for broadcast address. Okay, another is for the broadcast address. So in the network address, uh, so um, how many uh, IP addresses are left? Two fifty-four IP addresses are left. 
okay 254 ip addresses are left in general in general 254 ip addresses are available but in this scenario what happens there are 256 ip addresses right we need to divide it with four net sub networks so what we can do with how to do that so this is our ip address right so this is our ip address so and the, uh, and our uh, subnet mask is our prefix length is slash 24 that means our subnet mask will be 255.255.255.0 right so this total these three octets are the network portion right these three octets are the network portion and this last portion is the host portion okay so what happens here sorry this is the 192.168.0.0 address right so this is the network part 192.168.0 this is the network part and this particular zero is the host part this particular octet is the host part so zero 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 if we transfer it in the binary so that will be eight zeros right so in the concept of subnetting we can borrow the bits from the host part we can borrow the bits from the host address right so what is the formula if we borrow one bit if we borrow one bit from the host part how many networks can we can we i mean make we can make two networks because there are only two digits uh, are possible i mean we can we it is possible to make two digits two binary digits zero and one right there are only two binary digits digits present zero and one that's why we can make two networks here zero and one two networks okay so in order to make four networks what we need to do in order to make four networks we need to borrow two bits because 2 to the power 2 equals to 4 right what we can do 2 to the power 2 that means uh, equals to 4 that means we can make that means we can make four sub networks how 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 the combination will be like this we will see in a bit how this combination works actually okay so that is uh, that these are the combinations okay so how many networks we can build with two bits we can build four networks right so in general the formula will be 2 to the power x okay if 2 to the power x where x is the borrowed bits x is the number of borrowed bits where x is the number of borrowed bits okay to the power x so now how many bits are left two bits have been borrowed so six bits are left right so with those six bits this this particular six bits are for the host portion so how many hosts can be made from the six bits two to the power six right two to the power six means two to the power six means 64 right so 64 minus 2 why 2 because one is for the broadcast address uh, one is for the network address another is another ip address is reserved for the broadcast address one ip address is reserved for the network address and another network another um, ip address is reserved for the broadcast ip address right that's why what we can do we can make 62 we can connect 62 computers in each network in each network we can connect 62 computers okay so we have we are we have been given with 192.168.0.0 right network so from the we are getting we are getting 256 ip addresses so for example so now how how will it how will we divide it so we will divide it like this for let's example let's say for network 1 192.168.0.0 to 
192.162.168.0.63 that will be this this range will be assigned for network one why because 62 computers can be connected 62 computers can be connected to each network actually 64 but two uh, network addresses are reserved one is for network address and another is for broadcast address that why that is why 62 computers can be connected to network one so here we are writing 192.168.0.0 to 192.168.0.63 that means 64 ip addresses as we are counting it from zero right 64 ip addresses 64 ip addresses among 64 ip addresses 192.168.0.0 will be the network address and 192.168.0.63 will be the broadcast address broadcast address for network 2 192.168.0.64 to the range will go till 192. Point, sorry 192.168.0.127 right that means 192.168.0.64 is the network address for network 2 and 192.168.0.127 is the broadcast address of network 2 like this the network address of network three and broadcast address so let's let's write all the all this i mean ranges for network three it will be 192.163.168.0.128 to 192.168.0.191 right and for network three sorry network four 192.168.0.192.192.168.0.255 so from 192.168.0.0 to 192.168.0.255 that means 256 ip addresses have been utilized okay so that is the concept of flsm Okay, where the subnet mask, where the where the prefix length of each network is same. That means the prefix length, the prefix length will be slash twenty six in this case. Slash twenty six in this case because we have borrowed two bits, right? As we have borrowed two bits, that's why the sub prefix length is becoming slash twenty six. Okay, if we would, uh, if we have borrowed, um, if we borrow uh, one bit uh, from the host portion, then the sub prefix length will be uh, slash 25. If we borrow two bits, slash 26. If we borrow three bits, slash 27. If we borrow four bits, slash 28. If we borrow five bits, slash 29. If we borrow um, um, uh, six bits it will be slash 30 if we borrow uh, seven bits it will be slash 31 and if we borrow all the bits it will be slash 32 okay so these are the prefix length uh, length uh, length of sub networks in a class c network in a large network right in a you know large class c network okay now we will come to the concept of vlsm okay so what is VLSM? Variable length subnet mask. VLSM stands for variable length subnet mask. That means in, in what, what, what happens in case of VLSM? In case of VLSM, each subnet can have different prefix lengths. Okay. Each subnet can have different prefix length. Why do we need that? We need that because if the requirement of the network and host are large, then what will happen? Then we need to do, we, we can't do it with FLSM. We can't do it with FLSM. We need to, um, uh, I mean, apply or implement the concept of VLSM, variable length subnet mask. 
okay where uh, we can assign the network lens we can assign the i mean prefix lens according to the requirement according to the requirement we can assign it okay so let's understand it with an example for instance let's let me draw another diagram So we have taken two routers. There are four switches. Okay, these are the four switches. Okay. And for instance, we require this. Let, let me let me name those things. This is LAN A, for instance, this is LAN A. This is LAN B. This is LAN C. This is LAN D. Okay, so there are four LANs. So let me open the notepad. Let me open another page. So for instance, for LAN A, we require, we need to connect 100 hosts. For LAN B, we need, for instance, 64, okay? Or let's say, uh, let's, let's make it, um, let's make it um, for 50. Let's make it 50. For LAN B, LAN C, for LAN C, uh, let's say 30 computers can be connected. For LAN D, let's say 10 computers can be connected. Okay. So if we have to make, if we have to make a network, sub, if we have to make four sub networks of equal length, will it be possible? because we have been assigned with the IP address of 192.168.0.0 slash 24 network. Is it possible? Because if we want to, I mean, uh, if we want that, if we want that, we need, we, we, we cannot accommodate all the IP addresses inside this particular network. We are only, I mean, given with 256 IP addresses. Okay, we are only given with 256 IP addresses. So we can't, I mean, um, allow or, or if we, we can't, we can't assign, we can, uh, we can't add 100, uh, I mean, I mean, uh, sorry, we can't divide the network like uh, the, the network of LAN A, okay? We can't divide the subnetworks like the subnetwork of LAN A. So we need to find a different way, uh, another way, okay? So for LAN A, what can what can we do we can do we can assign different prefix lengths according to our requirement so the requirement is to accommodate 100 in hosts so to accommodate 100 in hosts what we can do we can borrow one bit why one bit because it will create one network and what we what uh, will uh, what will we will it do it will uh, i mean help to accommodate 128 computers. Why 128 computers? Because seven bits are left. Seven bits are left for the host. Okay. If we borrow one bit, if we borrow one bit from the host portion. Okay. Right. After that, for LAN B, the, the way is to take the largest number first, then after that, the second largest number, then after that, the third largest number, then after that, the fourth largest number. We need to make the net sub networks in this pattern. Okay, first largest number, then second largest, then third largest, then fourth largest. Okay, for LAN B, what will be the prefix length? 
for lan b the prefix length will be the prefix length for lan a is 20 slash 25 the prefix length for lan b is that means we need to accommodate 50 computers right so if we need to accommodate 50 computers so 2 to the power 6 okay 2 to the power 6 right so 2 to the power 6 means 64 okay we can't i um, mean reduce that we can't reduce that because if we reduce that to the if we because if we reduce that 2 to the power 5 means uh 32 right so it is not possible to accommodate 50 computers with slash 27 network so we have to make it slash 26 for lan c we can make it slash 27 and for lan d what we can do we need to make uh, we need to accommodate 10 computers right so 3 and 2 so 2 to the power 4 that 25 26 27 and 28 so we need to we have the prefix length will be slash 28 why because we need to just we need just four host bits we need just four host bits right and for this network for this network for this point to point network between these two routers so what well, let's let's uh, name it as uh, lan e for point to point network it will be slash uh, let's say we need four ip addresses right one is for one will be reserved for the network address and another is for the broadcast address so we need four so that will be two bits right so slash 29 slash 30 slash 30 sub network is enough okay so in this way, we can accommodate the this whole sub networks inside this a large class C network slash twenty four network. Okay, in the class C network. Okay, that means here one hundred. Let's let's sum it up. One hundred and twenty eight. This is sixty four. This is thirty two this uh, this means to the power 4 16 and this is that this is 4 that means 16 plus 4 20 20 plus 32 52 after that uh, 6 to 52 and plus 64 that means 6 and 5 116 116 and 128 that means let's let's do it in the calculator it will be easier okay so 20 20 30 uh, 52 52 52 plus 64 uh, plus 128 so that is 244 that comes 244 that means we are all we are we have accommodated all these computers inside the 256 ip addresses okay only two 44 ip addresses have been used among the 256 ip addresses right we have managed that so this is the concept of vlsm and that is the difference between flsm and vlsm after that we will learn the last topic that is static routing static routing means routing means when we need to send the data what is routing routing means when we need to send the data from one network to another network right so uh, to send from the data from one network to another route, uh, network what, what we need we need the concept of routers we need the concept of routers okay so in case of static routing we have to manually assign the path we have to manually assign the path if even if the router is faulty even if there is a problem with the inter with a with a particular interface of router uh, or the or the uh, i mean or the uh, network path of the uh, network path that has been set between two routers it the, the routing table will not change the routing table will only be changed by the administrator if it is done manual okay so let's let's understand it in the packet presser it will be it will be better okay so let's delete this diagram and let's take two routers okay and let's take 
two switches also and four computers okay done let's connect all these network devices together And let's connect these two routers with a serial cable. Okay, with a serial cable. Let's okay. There is no serial port connect here, so we will connect it with the crossover cable. Okay, we have connected it with the crossover cable. Okay, all right. So now let's configure the routers. First, let's say no. Then enable from to uh, enter from user exec mode to global configuration mode. Yeah, sorry, from user uh, exec mode to privilege exec mode. After that, config key to enter into the global configuration mode. After that, interface FA00 to enter in the interface configuration mode. Then assign the IP address. Let's say the IP address is 192.168.0.1 for this interface 255.255.255.0. No shutdown to manually, I mean, turn on the interface. After that, let's say interface 01, FA01. Let's assign the IP address 10.0.0.1255.0.0.0. No shutdown. Okay, done. Let's configure this router also. No, in the same way, enable config key. Okay, after that interface, FA00, IP address 192.168. That is a different network, right? That is a different network. 192.168.1.1. 255, 255, 0, no shutdown. Interface, FA01, IP address. 10.0.0.2255 no shutdown okay done now configure the i mean okay let's let's go to this real time mode okay let's configure the computers and this is 192.168.0.2 255 and the default gateway will be 192.168.0.1 Let's configure the second router. One ninety two point one sixty eight point zero point three, and then one ninety two point one sixty eight point zero point one. Okay, then let's configure this route particular computer. Why it is showing red? I think there is some problem with the PC. Let's delete it. Okay, we will just configure one PC here, and let's 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 take another PC also. Let's take another PC, and then just connect it. Okay, okay. Now it is turned on. Okay, one ninety two point one sixty eight point one point two. And this is 192.168.1.1. Okay, this is 192.1.3255. And this is 192.168.1.1. Right? After that, we need to configure the static routing part. So, in the static routing part, let's exit it from here. Then, IP root. Then, the destination IP address. 192 the uh, destination network address right 1.0 then the subnet mask of the destination network and after that the in the interface id uh, the ip address of the interface of router 2 10.0.0.2 okay that is done this is the ip address of this particular interface of router 1 and for the router 1 
in let's exit let's press exit ip root 192.168.0.0255.255.255.0 right done okay this is the ip address of this particular interface okay okay so now if we want to ping 192.168.1.2 Okay. okay so we are getting the ping ping reply right and if we ping let's let's open the command prompt ping 192.168.0.2 so we are get, also getting the ping reply okay so this is the process of static routing okay so that's all for today okay and we will uh, i mean um, do another topic in the next class okay next session thank you guys okay thank you all